Welcome back to part three of chapter five, exploring uh, forces and applying Newton's laws. This time we are talking about ropes and pulleys and tension forces on those ropes. Okay, so first let's identify what exactly tension is. Tension, if it's on a massless rope, so assuming we're not worrying about the weight of the rope itself, we're just going to say the rope is a, a transfer of a force, um, the tension on the rope would be the force of the pull on the rope. So let's figure out what that means. Uh, if we take a look at two people here um, who are pulling on the rope, uh, we would see that in the first situ situation, I'm going to erase some of this. Um, in the first situation, I see this man pulling on the rope. Um, and he's pulling backwards. And that means that he's exerting a force in this direction of 100 Newtons. OK, so the tension that would be exerted on that rope is 100 Newtons. Nothing shocking there. Here's the part that is a little bit weird for me. So he's pulling with 100 Newtons and the tension all the way along the rope is 100 Newtons. But the wall here, remember we said every force has an equal and opposite force, every action reaction pair from Newton's third law. So if he's pulling this way with 100 Newtons, the wall is pulling back with 100 Newtons. So he's got 100 Newtons pulling that way, 100 Newtons pulling that way, and that gives a tension force of 100 Newtons. That's the tension all the way along the rope, 100 Newtons. OK, so what if I mix it up, and now instead of having a wall, it goes to another person? So the man is pulling in this direction, right here, with 100 Newtons, and the woman is pulling in this direction with 100 Newtons. Well, in this case, the tension is still 100 Newtons. What? That doesn't make any sense to me. Because this woman is just taking the place of the wall. We said that if somebody pulls 100 Newtons, then the wall pulls back the other direction. Well, this woman is pulling back the other direction. She's applying an equal and opposite force. So the tension in the rope remains 100 Newtons. I got to be honest, this part's still barely makes sense. Like I understand it, but it doesn't totally fit with my conception of the world. Um, but I understand it based off of the forces are equal and opposite. So if you pull from one end, it's 100 Newtons against a wall. If you pull from the other end, uh, then the person is doing the job of the wall and it's still 100 Newtons. Another point to focus on is not those super large words. Um, but that the tension is the same all the way through the rope. So all points on the rope that are being pulled, like not the part of the rope hanging below you, but the part of the rope above you uh, or off to the side of you that you're pulling on, the tension will be the same all the way through. So the tension in between these people's hands from there, here to here, this is all tension of 100 Newtons. Okay. So let's see if we can apply that just a little bit. And we'll do a little example of placing a leg in traction. Um, this sounds very unpleasant, but if you break a bone and it's like severely broken, they don't want your contracting leg muscles to pull your bones back together uh, and force them together too hard. It could like shrink one of your legs. Ugh. Um, this sounds yucky to me, which is why I'm not a trauma surgeon. I let my sister do that job. And she is much better at dealing with gross stuff and separating the sadness of work from her regular life. Um, so what I know here is that I have a hanging mass of 4.2 kilograms. That's down here. Um, I also know that I would like the doctor requests 50 Newtons of traction for this patient. So they want to pull at 50 Newtons. What that means is that pulling the other direction this way also has to be 50 Newtons. And we're trying to figure out what angle should I set that rope at? Um, what should my angle of against horizontal be? 
four, these pieces of rope with those frictionless pulleys. All right, so I got a 4.2 kilogram mass. My first step is gonna be trying to figure out the tension force on that rope. So if the rope was just hanging straight down, um, it would have tension from that mass. And that mass is being pulled by gravity, it's going down. So I could say the force of gravity is equal to the weight of that pulley, um, or that mass, which is equal to the mass times acceleration due to gravity, which is equal to 4.2 kilograms times the acceleration due to gravity, 9.8 meters per second squared, which is equal to 41.2 newtons. Okay, so this has a tension force of 41.2 newtons right there on that little section. Now remember, the rope has the same tension everywhere on it. So I could also say that the tension force right here going that way is 41.2 newtons. And the tension force over here, that way, is 41.2 newtons. And I drew both of those arrows going away from that pulley point because that is the point where I have the leg pulling one direction and the rope pulling the opposite directions, right? Um, so I know that they have tension forces of 41.2. I also know that there are two ropes. So each rope will pull half of the total force. Now, if I took this horizontal component of 50 newtons and I said, okay, I know that there's 50 newtons that way, in order for it to be even and opposite, in order for the leg to stay in place and not have it move all over the place, I don't want any acceleration. So I need a net force, has to be equal to zero, right? In order to balance 50 newtons in one direction, I would need 50 newtons in the other direction, but I'm splitting it onto two ropes. So I have two ropes, one there and one there, and this is the horizontal components only. If I take my 50 and I split it in two, right, I'm gonna need, I could write this as the tension force of X plus the tension force of X has to equal 50 Newtons. And since I know they're the same rope with the same tension force, those should be the same. Two tension force of X equals 50 Newtons. So the tension force of X, or sorry, tension force in the X direction has to be equal to 25 Newtons. Cool. So now I can go back in and say that these X components are 25 Newtons, 25 Newtons. All right, so now I have a horizontal component. I have the uh, hypotenuse component I could draw in that this is like a right triangle. There's my right triangle and there's another right triangle like that. Um, but all I need is the hypotenuse. I need that and I need to figure out the angle. So if I took that and I redrew it down here, I'm gonna have an angle like this. There's my angle. That's an unknown angle. Its hypotenuse is 41.2. Its horizontal component is 25. Uh, this horizontal component is the adjacent angle and the hypotenuse. So cosine of theta equals adjacent over hypotenuse. Cosine of theta equals the adjacent, which is 25 newtons, over the hypotenuse, 41.2 newtons. Then I have to do a little uh, inverse cosine. So cosine to the negative one of 25 over 41.2 gives me my answer for the angle, which is 52.6 degrees, or I could round it since I only uh, was using two digit numbers, I could round it to 53 degrees is my angle off the horizontal. So there you go. Um, each of these should be in at 53 degrees. So that's gonna be a pretty obtuse angle, 100, 
uh, six degrees total. Um, but it's actually gonna end up looking something like this because those are each a little bit more than 45s. Okay, so that one kind of makes sense. Let's do our last sample question. Yay! Okay, so lifting a stage set. This one's a little bit tricky. We've got a 200 kilogram set. Okay, this is, I've got a picture of it. So that set is 200 kilograms that I'm trying to bring down from a loft above the stage. The person who's tasked with that is a 100 kilogram man, we call him a stage hand. Okay, so he's 100 kilograms, that's equal to the mass of the set, that's equal to the mass of the man. Um, and then I'm trying to figure out what is the acceleration of the man. So I'm trying to find the acceleration of the man, and it's in the vertical direction because he's on a pulley going up and down. The set is also going up and down, so I can kind of ignore the horizontals. All right, so step one is I could draw my uh, free body diagrams. So I've got my black dot there. I have my tension force on the man is going up, the rope is pulling him up, and the thing pulling him down is his own weight, and it's going down there. The tension force on the set is also going up because the rope is on the upper end of it. There's the tension force, there's the tension force. And its weight is going down, but its weight is way bigger than the man's weight. So it's gonna be bigger than the tension force where the man's weight was smaller. So I'm left with net forces. That way is the force net on the man and for the stage, the force net is going to be down. So these are opposites, right? And uh, remember, when something's going up in the positive direction, we say that it is a positive value. When something's going negative, down, we say it's a negative value. So I could also, looking at these two accelerations, um, since they're attached by a rope, I know that they have to be equivalent in magnitude. Uh, what goes up that it's connected to a rope has to come down at the same speed. Zoop, 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 zoop. Um, so the acceleration of the man is positive. It has to be equal to the negative version of the acceleration of the stage hand, right? The acceleration of the stage hand is down in the negative version. Um, or the acceleration of the man is equal to the negative, I could call this one negative acceleration of the man, right? So A sub S equals negative A sub M. Actually, that's probably a better way of writing it. I don't wanna say A M equals negative A M. A S is equal to the negative acceleration of the man, right? They're flip flops from each other. Same magnitude, but opposite signs. Okay, now I could do a sum of forces. So if I wanted to do a sum of forces, I could say the sum of forces on the man is equal to the overall mass of the man times the overall acceleration of the man. And that's equivalent to the two forces working against him. And those two forces are the tension and the weight. So the tension going up minus the weight going down. And that would be tension weight of the man. I could do the same for the set. The sum of forces on the set is equal to the mass of the set times the acceleration of the set. And that is equal to the two forces acting on the set. The tension is going up, so that's gonna be positive, and the weight is going down, so that's gonna be negative. So that's equal to the tension minus the weight of the set. Okay, now I, let's go through and see what I have and what I need. Um, I have, the mass of the man, that's 100. 
I know that the acceleration of the man, that's what I'm solving for. So that's good. I'm going to underline that. The tension, I don't know. So that's a, a concern. The weight, I can calculate because I have his mass and I know the acceleration due to gravity. On this side, the mass of the set I know is 200 kilograms. The acceleration of the set is equivalent to the negative version of the acceleration of the man, so that's okay. The tension, I don't know. And the weight, I can calculate using mass and acceleration. So let's do that. Let's find the weight of each one. So up here, the weight of the man uh, is equal to the mass of the man times the acceleration due to gravity. So that's G. Uh, and the weight of the set is equal to the mass of the set times the acceleration due to gravity. The mass of the man is 100 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared, or 980 newtons is the weight there. This one is 200 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared gives me 1960 newtons. So that is the weight of the set. Go in there. This one is the weight of the man. It can go in there. The mass I got, and then I'm going to just fill in both of these and make some parallel equations because I think if I set tension equal to each other, then I'll be good to go. So the mass of the man, acceleration of the man, good. Uh, the mass of the man was 100 kilograms times the acceleration of the man is equal to the tension force minus its weight, 980 newtons. On the other side, I have the mass of the set is 200 kilograms times, so for the acceleration of the set, I'm now gonna sub in that the acceleration of the set is equal to the negative acceleration of the man, right there, because I want it in terms of the acceleration of the man, right? That's what I was asked to find, what's the acceleration of the man? So I'm gonna do negative acceleration of the man, oops equals the tension force minus the weight of 1960 newtons. Okay, so now if I set them both equal to T, uh, in order to get them both equal to T, I just add the 1960 to both sides over here. And I'm going to add the 980 over here So now I get 100 kilograms acceleration of the man plus 980 newtons equals the tension force, which is equal to 200 kilograms times negative acceleration of the man. There, actually, let's do some math while we're here. I'll just move that negative out there, negative 200 acceleration of the man plus 1960 newtons. Okay, so now I can go through, sorry, I sat down, I got tired. Huh. Um, so now I can go through and I can say, uh, let's do some subtraction, or actually first let's just do some crossing out. So the T part, that's good because now I just set them equal to each other. These two are equal to each other. Um, so I am going to add 200 kilograms times the acceleration of the man to both sides. 200 kilograms acceleration of the man. And at the same time, I'm going to subtract 980 newtons minus 980 newtons, I'm left with uh, 100 kilograms plus 
200 kilograms, acceleration of the man. So this will cancel, that's good. 100 plus 200 is 300 kilograms, acceleration of the man, equals uh, 1960 minus 980 is 980 newtons. Ha-ha! I think I'm getting there. Divide both sides by 300 kilograms. And I get the acceleration of the man equals 980 divided by 300. 980 divided by 300, 3.266. Three point two seven meters per second squared, or about equal to three point three meters per second squared. Hoi yo yo, and there we go. So, could the man accelerate upwards at three point three meters per second squared, and the th the set would come down at three point three meters per second squared? That seems reasonable. It's less than 9.8 meters per second squared, because if the man wasn't there, the set would just free fall at 9.8. He's providing a counterweight, so he's slowing it down a little bit, reducing its acceleration. Uh, so somewhere between, somewhere less than 9.8 seems good. 3.3 meters per second squared seems like it's in the realm of possibility. And uh, just like that, I think we got it. Ah, oh, good job, friends. All right. So that is chapter five, all three parts. Now, time to do those practice problems, um, all of the multiples of five, as per usual. Enjoy.